to a lack of strategic clarity. It's now 10 years since the McPherson report was published, the result of a long investigation into the police handling of the murder of Stephen Lawrence. The McPherson report said the police were institutionally racist, a controversial verdict which sent shockwaves through British society. It was a fundamental moment in race relations in this country and ushered in a range of new measures. Well, today the Home Affairs Select Community said there was still a long way to go. The number of black people in the criminal justice system is still blatantly disproportionate, they said. But the MPs also said that the police have made tremendous strides and while racism remains a serious problem in society, could it perhaps be that, that racism directed against African Caribbean people like 18-year-old Stephen Lawrence is in fact now declining? Well, let's have a look at the data that tracks racially motivated incidents. Recorded racist incidents in England and Wales stood at 14,000 in 1998, increased to 53,000 in 2001, and hit over 61,000 by 2007. But this increase is partly explained by changes to the definition of race crime. Now, according to the British Crime Survey, which measures perception of rather than recorded crime, racially motivated incidents shrunk dramatically from 390,000 in 1995 to 280,000 in 1999. And by 2007, there were 184,000. So, while the number of recorded race crimes has soared, the perception, or the fear, if you like, has halved. We know that racist incidents directed against Asians and Eastern Europeans have increased. So could this suggest that racism directed towards African Caribbeans has declined? Well, has it? Here to help us answer that are Alfred John, who's chair of the Met Black Police Association, and Wilfred Emmanuel Jones, a farmer and Tory activist. Uh, starting with you, Alfred, John, T take us through those figures. Are things better or worse for African Caribbean people? Well, actually, I do think that they're worse because one of the things that the figures don't indicate is in actual fact how comfortable and confident f people feel to go and report things to the police. The stop and search um, has actually damaged community relations and the overt use, and therefore the confidence of people coming forward is affected. So well, the figures... Are, are, are actually quite inaccurate. We can come back to matters of stop and search and whatnot in a moment, but uh, Wilfred Emmanuel Jones, uh, the figures, what do you make of what Alfred Jones has uh, just said? Are things getting better or worse for African Caribbean people in this country? Well, I think for a lot of African Caribbean people in this country, things are still quite difficult. Your colour really determines how you're treated. Just to give you an example, I mean, I'm now 52, and I still, when I'm sort of entering certain buildings, people assume that I'm the taxi driver rather than someone actually there coming to do business. So there is a long way we have to go in society in terms of giving black people generally more opportunities than's happening at the moment. But what about the trend, Mr. Mr. Jones? Are things getting better than they were 10 years ago? Well, I mean, for someone like me, I think they're getting better, but I think for a vast section of our society, they would probably say that things are worse or they haven't improved at all. I mean, one of, the, one of the things I've experienced is that, unfortunately, in a lot of our organisations um, where they're actually charged in giving um, diversity, unfortunately, it isn't high priority within these organisations. And it's not until diversity becomes a high priority issue that things are fundamentally going to change. Well, let, let's put and some of that, that to Alfred Jones then, uh, taking uh, as a case in point the Metropolitan Police, dubbed institutionally racist, as we all know. Um, have they got better? Um, in relation to many areas, yes. But in relation to um, um, the progression of black staff and black officers in relation to the disproportionate discipline of black staff and black officers we are still facing the same similar types of problem we are keen to work with the current line management the current um, board of the metropolitan police service but we have to acknowledge the existence of these problems before we can actually attack them properly so, so let's just get this straight it's been 10 years and still we haven't solved this yes i i quite agree um, we haven't solved this problem at all but and um, the gentleman is quite right in stating that 
actually, it's, it's a, to be honest, it's about a credibility issue. What is the cre who is the credible voice on the way that race relations are going on within the Metropolitan Police Service? And who, who is that credible the, voice? The truth is, it cannot be the Commissioner. I wouldn't, ex I wouldn't expect, uh, say for example, a white male to be speaking about how well things have improved for females inside the organisation. I would expect that to come from a woman who's done well. What, what, one, one thing that you have engaged in is you've uh, encouraged black people that want to be police officers not to be. Do you still stand by that? We, our boycott still stands. Until we actually, Isn't that counterproductive, though? Uh, to be perfectly honest, we can't stop people joining the police. That's, that, that's not the motive of doing that. There's two reasons for that boycott, and that is, one, it's to do with the, the way that people feel within the organisation, and two, it's also to pre-warn people as to what to expect when they get there. Let me put that to Mr Emmanuel, jo Mr. Emmanuel Jones. Uh, black people shouldn't join the police. Well, of course, black people should join the police, but I do understand that a lot of black people do have problems once they've joined the police. I think in terms of getting this thing sorted out, the most fundamental important thing is that we, we have to stop making white people feel frightened of black people. There really is a problem with communication and that we live in a society where once as a black person you really talk about your problems, you're either accused of being um, a victim so or you're sort of being talked about being sort of um, politically do you, do you, correct. Do you saying that the, the, the race relations industry, for want of a better term, scares white society still? It, oh, it, it most definitely does. One of my big sort of concerns about it is that, in a sense, the, 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 the race industry is owned by the, the perspective of the left. And the, the, the white liberals have thought, well, we've got to listen to what these black um, leftists say, and therefore they're the ones who understand the community. But as a community, we have to really stand back and think there are certain things that we have to look at and Mr. how we could actually improve our lot. Because the most important thing we have to remember as, 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 as Mr. black Emmanuel people is Jones. that we... Thank you very much indeed. I'm very sorry to butt in, but we're out of time. Thank you uh, for joining us, and thank you, Alfred John, for coming in too. Pleasure. Coming up on Morpho News after the break, is this the end of the pub? The